Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to show you in under 10 minutes how you can build an end-to-end -end solution using Microsoft Forms, Power Automate and SharePoint. So the particular use case is we have an application process via Microsoft Form, we're going to request some evidence, an ID document, and then once that ID document has been uploaded by the customer, we're going to put it through a validation process using AI Builder to make sure that their personal details match those that were supplied on the Microsoft form. So in the video, I'm going to show you how we can build that end to end, but I'll also show you a couple of demonstrations using both a passport and a driver's license as a form of ID and how we can compare that data automatically all using Power Automate. So if that's something that interests you, please make sure you watch on. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the demonstration. So we're gonna kick things off from a very basic Microsoft form. And you can see here, I'm capturing the first and last name, their date of birth, and then finally their email address. Now this is gonna be a standard application form. Of course, we could be capturing a whole lot more data at this point, but the thing that I really want to highlight is the fact that we're capturing the email address because this form is going to be available externally to any user. And then with that email address, we're gonna automatically generate a folder for that end user to then upload their ID documents, which we'll use as part of the overall automated process. Moving over to SharePoint, I've got both a SharePoint list and also a SharePoint document library. The first of which we're looking at the list for our application data. And this is where I'm going to initially store the information that's been sent via the Microsoft form, but then also provide any updates as a result of the ID document being uploaded, where I'm going to use the evidence validated column that we can see just marked here that I'll open up to indicate the current status of their application process. I also have a link to evidence, which is based on the new folder that's been created. And also finally a notes column, which is gonna include any data that hasn't been successfully validated. Jumping over into my my document library, Evidence Uploads, I have an example folder there for a customer, Demo Bird, who on the 7th of May has applied via the application process and a folder has been created for him. Now today we're going to take advantage of a relatively new feature in SharePoint. If I click on the ellipses here, you can see that I can request files and we're going to automate that process as part of them completing the Microsoft form. I have various links that I'll include in the description that will show you how to enable this and also an explanation of how we managed to get it to work using the SharePoint REST API. But the basic premise is we're going to automate requesting files, entering a description by giving it a name, and then copying the link, which will then email out to the end user based on the email address that they've supplied on the Microsoft form. And here we can see that the file request has now been created. But of course, in this demonstration, this part is gonna be fully automated based on completing the Microsoft form. The final piece I'd like to highlight about this document library is if I go into one of the folders, you'll see that when the end user uploads their evidence, we have three additional columns and from that ID document that's gonna be uploaded, we're gonna extract entities using AI Builder. So in this case, the first, last name, and the expiry date of their ID document, and we're gonna use that as part of the validation process. So we're now gonna take a look at the first flow, which is gonna trigger when that Microsoft form is completed. And it's just a basic trigger, application form is the name of my application form on Microsoft Forms. And then I'm getting the response details based on that dynamic value for response ID. The compose ref is a compose action that is bringing together four different strings to create the unique reference, which is in the form of today's date, a hyphen, the first letter of the user's first name, and then their last name. And it's using the expression concat to bring together those four different strings. I'm then gonna create a new folder in that evidence uploads document library that we took a look at. And I'm using that unique reference that I've generated for our folder path. I then move on to creating an item in that SharePoint list, the application list, which is gonna include, again, that reference in the title, followed by their first last name, email address, and date of birth as supplied in that Microsoft form. And I set the default status as awaiting evidence. I then provide a link to the evidence, which is based on the full URL to the SharePoint site and document library, followed by that reference that we've generated above. Now, when it comes to creating our share link for our customer in order to upload their ID document, I'm using the SharePoint REST API, and I'm gonna deep dive into that later on in the video, but you'll see that the site address is based on that SharePoint site. I'm posting 
There's a URI which includes the name of the document library followed by a dynamic value for the ID of the folder that's being used for that share link. And then within the body, I have two dynamic values, the first of which is an expiry date, and that's based on the compose that you can just see above there. It's in a specific format. And then the description of that share link that we're creating, I'm basing it on the string reference, semicolon, and then the output of that reference that I've generated at the beginning of the flow. Now, in order to get the link back from that HTTP response, it's quite a complex expression. I've included that on screen now, so you can take a quick look. But if you include that, you'll be able to get the URL straight out of that HTTP request and then pass it into the send an email action where you can see I have a body for that email followed by the link tag so that we get a nice clickable link to that new file location for them to upload their file. Now, if we take a look at our second flow, it's all based on when a file is created, and this is looking at our evidence upload document library, but you'll note that if any folders are created, this is also going to trigger. So one of the things that I've implemented is a trigger condition. So if we go to the ellipses here and into settings, you'll see at the bottom, I have a trigger condition, which is looking at the is folder parameter and making sure it's set to false. So that'll ensure that this flow will only trigger if a new file is being created rather than if a new folder is being created, which of course is going to happen in our other flow. Once a flow is triggered, we're getting the file content using the full path that's pulled across from the dynamic content of that trigger. We're then gonna pass across the file content that comes from that get file content above into the AI builder in order to extract information from ID documents. With the data that's provided back to us from the AI builder, we're going to update the first, last name and the expiry date of the ID document on that document library. So we'll be able to check without having to open the file, the data that's being captured and then using get items from that original application list that I have created in order to filter on the title where I'm storing the customer's unique reference. Now using an expression based on the file path, I am splitting that file path on the forward slash in order to enable me to get that customer ID and then using the integer index of one, I'm able to pull that out and use it in the filter query that's highlighted on screen now. This will enable me to just get that single item back from the SharePoint site, which I'll use later on in this flow. Now, in order to make my life, but also your life a lot easier, I'm using a get item action, which will get just a single item. And it means that I can then use all the dynamic values from that action without having to worry about mucking about with any apply to each loops that might get created. Now, if you haven't yet understood why Power Automate creates apply to each loops, I have a video on that, and that will give you an insight as to what's going on. But if we use this get item, we'll then be able to just use the dynamic content without having to worry about these loops being created. And you'll see that the expression I have on screen here is getting the first ID from the get items, which of course will be on that filter, ensuring that we look up the correct customer by their reference. Next, for my sanity and also for the notes column that I have in the SharePoint list, I have a comparison of the data that's being captured by the AI Builder tool, but also the data that we have currently held about that user. So we'll compare the first name in the ID document against the first name of the value that's currently in the SharePoint list, last name with last name, the identity document with today's date, and also the date of birth. This leads on really nicely onto our condition, which is gonna do exactly that and check that all these things match, that the first name and the last name are equal to each other, that the identity document expiry date is greater than today, and that the date of birth is equal to the date of birth that we capture on the Microsoft form. Now the little tip at this point, if you are using conditions, by inserting a compose above, you'll be able to see those values and understand really quickly why something's not working. And it's also worth noting that things like is equal to on strings rely on those strings being in the same case. So there are a couple of expressions, two upper and two lower, that you could apply to both the expressions on either side to make sure that the strings are in the same case. But also with a condition, when you look back at the history, you don't get to see the values that were sent across. So by using this compose above, it's very easy for me to debug and work out why on earth things didn't match as I would expect. And then finally, as a result of the condition, if those values are all true, then we'll update the item and mark the evidence validated to passed. If they're not true, then of course we'll update the evidence to say it's invalid 
and in the notes section I'm going to output that compose which has the side by side comparison and it just means that we have a very quick way of glancing to see why that evidence has failed. So I'm now going to kick things off with a full blown demo of both our happy traveller on the left hand side but also Janice and Sample on the right hand side. We'll get them to fill out their Microsoft form. They'll then be sent a link which will enable them to upload their ID document and then once that's been completed our back office process will kick off and it will validate the data on their document against that that they've supplied on the original Microsoft form. If I bring up the Microsoft form I have filled it out as the happy traveller with the date of birth and I've used my own email address at this point but you'll note I have completed the first name and last name in uppercase this is purely because my flow does not have the two upper or two lower expression in place that I described earlier in this video. If I go ahead and hit submit this will then trigger our flow which should generate us an email. So you can see here, thank you for completing the application process. You have seven days to upload your evidence. If I copy that link, I'm going to open up a new guest profile. So I'm currently not logged in at all to Office 365. And if I paste that in, I will get my personalized space for uploading. You'll see that there's a the reference here, which includes the date and also their first letter and their last name. And now we can go ahead and select some files. So I'm going to upload Happy Traveler's Passport. So I'm just working my way through the interface that we have in SharePoint for uploading files. I'll hit the upload button and our file is now uploaded. This of course should now trigger our second flow. So whilst we wait for that second flow to trigger, if we have a look at that SharePoint list, we can see Happy Traveler's data that's been captured there and we're currently awaiting evidence. You'll see now that the evidence validated had changed to past and if I go to the evidence uploads, we'll be able to see the folder for our Happy Traveler including their document, which includes their first name and last name and the expiry date of their document, which been, has been extracted using AI Builder. If we now put Janice through her paces, I'll complete the details again with her first and last name and her date of birth, and of course my email address for the demo. I'll hit submit. That will generate a new email, which has just arrived. And if I copy that link again, I'll go and open it up in a new browser window. And you'll note that this time the reference is based on Janice, I'll upload her file, complete the various details, and that's our file now uploaded to SharePoint. If we jump onto the document library, you'll see that we've got a folder for Janice. We can see the file that she's just uploaded. At the moment, there's no first name, last name, and expiry date data, because that's all based on the AI builder extracting those entities and saving them against those columns. But if we give it a few seconds, we can see now that that first name, last name, and expiry date has come through nicely. And you'll note that the expiry date is actually the 5th of August 2020, which is out of date as far as I'm concerned. If we jump across onto the application data list, you'll note that her record has come up as invalid. And on the right hand side, we have the notes. So if we take a quick glance, we can see that the first name matches, the last name matches, but indeed the expiry date is prior to today's date, which is the 7th of May 2023, which will explain why her evidence has been made invalid. So this functionality can be fully extended to suit your own particular requirements. And you could, of course, trigger off an email or an adaptive card to let them know that an application has failed validation. Using that link to evidence, I can jump straight back into the folder that contains Janice's uploaded driver's license. If we now want to have a look at the SharePoint REST API in order to create these file upload requests, it's worth noting that the documentation isn't very detailed because this is more pro code now, but I have found some official documentation which I'll include in the description, but I'll show you how I was able to find out what we need in order to submit the body to this endpoint. So quite simply, it involves firing up developer tools. You can go in and select a folder. You can go and use that ellipses and go and request a file. And you'll notice that on the right hand side, as I fill out all these different fields, there's lots of stuff popping up. But the bit we're looking for is this share link. And you'll see I have the request URL, which includes a couple of parameters, that being the list using the list GUID, but then also the item ID. 
Now in my demo, I have used the ability to retrieve a list by name, and that's in the official SharePoint REST API documentation. We can also look at the payload, the body that's sent across to that API, and this is a list of all the parameters. So things like the description I set to 12, you can see there's an exp expiration date, which is currently null, but in my demo, I was able to set that to a date in the future. If I fire up the official docs, if we have a quick look down here, we can see some examples of getting document libraries based on their title. Again, another document here about the details of the share link, albeit the parameters are not described. So this is something that you have to get via developer tools as things stand. If you're looking for docs on how to create a file request manually or why you can't see it, again, there's a link here which I'll include. And it's something that might need to be enabled in either SharePoint or OneDrive. The other thing to note, which is of interest, is that the Graph API does enable you to create a sharing link. But at the moment, it's not a file request. So you have the ability to create a view, an edit or an embedded link. So keep an eye on these documents. Finally, if your requirement is to set up a link on OneDrive rather than SharePoint, all you need to do is change that site address to the URL of your personal OneDrive site. And everything else pretty much remains the same. And that's me done, folks. Thanks very much for getting to this point, for watching, and I hope to see you again sometime soon. Cheers.